From the University of Nebraska, standing six feet four inches, 313 pounds, the former second overall pick in the NFL draft, and Dominican Sue wearing number 74 as he takes the field for his first Eagles practice. The Birds adding to their defensive line this week as they try to shore up the run D ahead of a matchup with the Indianapolis Colts. We welcome you to Birds Huddle, powered by our friends at PointsBet, along with Dave Zangaro and Michael Barkan. So, Linval Joseph and Dominican Sue, I'm going to schedule the parade for uh, <laughs> second week, third week of February. What do you think? Problem solved? Sounds pretty good, right? Yes. It'll help. And look, it's not like these two guys are in the primes of their careers right now. We know the deal. They're 34, 35 years old. They were pro bowlers at one point. But the nice thing here is that they're not coming in to be star players. They're coming in to be role players on a defensive line that's already pretty good. So as long as that all works and as long as they're able to just play their roles and be rotational guys, yeah, I mean, this has the chance to work. Also worth pointing out, they have not been injured. In the case of Sue, I think he's only missed two games and that was due to suspension. Yeah, he has never missed a game in his career for injury, which is insane. The guy was drafted in 2010, so an incredible streak of durability. And Linval Joseph has played an awful lot, too. So that's the other thing. I mean, these guys are coming in after not playing all season, and you're wondering, well, what kind of shape are they in? How much can the Eagles get from them early? I mean, the track record here for these guys is that they take care of their bodies, and they're going to be healthy. So I think it's realistic to expect them to step in and play pretty soon. Well, and Dominican Sue met the media this afternoon and disclosed why he decided to sign with the Eagles. It's our bird's eye view presented by our friends at Ocean Casino and Resort in Atlantic City. Championships, uh, that's what keeps me going. Uh, having an opportunity to play for one. Uh, this team has done an amazing job uh, thus far, and I feel like I can, I can come and, and help. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say I was just going to go play for any old team. I, I want to have an opportunity to go and earn a ring and, and celebrate that with my family and especially my teammates and the people I did it with. Uh, and for me, uh, it's important, I've, like you said earlier, I've been able to have amazing accolades just from a standpoint of the individual, but it, it's more than that at this particular stage of my life. And Dominican Sue says he wants to ring the bell. Wants another ring. That brings us to Dave's three-point stance presented by your Mercedes. Your first stance, Dave. The Eagles have added 34-year-old Linval Joseph and 35-year-old Indomitian Sue. Yet your stance is this Eagles defensive line is not too old. Plenty left in the tank for these elder statesmen along the D-line. For this season. Now, it's not like the plan is the re-sign all these guys and run it back in 2023, but this is a team right now that is trying to win a Super Bowl, and I think they have the pieces on that defensive line to make it work. And like I mentioned a little bit ago, it's not like these guys are going to have to play 70% of the snaps. They have so many players, and as long as they stay healthy, they're going to have the opportunity to rotate, keep these guys fresh. And based on what we saw last year, they can still play. Now, Robert Quinn's gotten off to a slow start, and that's in the back of your mind, right? Another older guy they bring in, not, not playing up to that level, but a lot of, a lot of time left here. And last year, Linval Joseph, we saw him in the game against the Eagles, absolutely crushed them. And Adama Kinsu was very good last year for Tampa Bay. So I think they still have the ability to be very good in this defense. I'm looking at those names, though. That's a lot of atomic bomb, man. That's a lot of Ben Gay putting on those aging <laughs> it muscles. Is. I'll tell you what. Your second stance, DZ, your confidence is high that the Eagles will bounce back from a weird and sloppy game Monday night when they picked up their first loss of the season, yes? Yeah, and look, it was a bad loss. We all know that. But the bright spot here is that they did it to themselves. I mean, they really beat themselves in that game. Three turnovers. They couldn't get off the field on third downs. And what I was so impressed by in the locker room after the game is just how calm everyone was. There was zero panic, and that's because there were clearly issues that they need to solve, and they know what they are. You know, if you get beat by a team that's just better than you, it can be a little demoralizing because you're thinking, man, we're not good enough to do this. That's not the way the Eagles felt after this game. They felt like, no, we were clearly the better team. We should have won this football game, and we didn't because we shot ourselves 
in the foot. So as long as they take care of those things, as long as they take care of the football, which they did for the first nine weeks of the season, they should be able to clean up these issues and beat an inferior team on Sunday. Now, Ruben and Jaws disagree with me on the post-game show, but I'm thinking... They How dare they? How dare they? They played two games in 28 days. Mm -hmm. How could Rust not be involved in this situation? Yeah, I get that point. But the thing is, they didn't start off real slow in that game. They actually right. got a lead. Mm -hmm. And I think the rest helps because they have all these older players now, right? And they want to get that rest. You look at the offensive line. They were banged up going into the bye week. They had four of their five players going into that bye week on the, injured, on the injury report. And then Lane Johnson suffered a concussion. So you get a little further removed from that. It should have helped. I, I Maybe in a little bit, I'll try to help you out a little Thank bit. Thank you. Maybe a little bit a little it bit. played a role, but it was a little bit. All right, anyway. third stance from DZ. The Indianapolis defensive line will be a major challenge for the Eagles' O-line on Sunday. Yeah, it's a big matchup. Now, Quiddy Pay, their defensive end, one of their starters, is out of this game. But in, in, in Yannick Ngakwe on the other side, we saw him last year when they played the Raiders, had a monster game on his way to be being named the AFC Defensive Player of the Week. He's still very good. you got to worry about him if you're Jordan Mailata on that left side of the offensive line. And then in the middle, you have DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart in the middle playing really high level. So the interior offensive line has a task ahead of them, too. All right, here's the playbook presented by your Philadelphia area Cadillac dealers. Rodney McLeod will line up against his former team on Sunday. He is uniquely qualified to compare this year's Eagles team to the team he played for, the Eagles team that won Super Bowl 52. That and more as we continue Birds Huddle. Birds Huddle is powered by PointsBet. Whether you are on the move or on the couch, do it live on PointsBet.